Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Look, I was going to make this video tomorrow morning, but I just can't wait! I'm going to have to do it now. I'm going to have to do it now! Um, because some people pointed me towards um, a Young Year video, uh, where Young Year uh, was talking about this. And this is an interview between Pete Hines and Kind of Funny's Greg Miller, uh, where Pete Hines finds his safe space with them, and has a good old cry. Because do you know what, folks? Pete Hines and Bethesda, they're the victims. They're the victims of some very, very nasty YouTubers and other social media people that said some very, very horrible things about fail out 70 shit, uh, which was a complete and utter mess because it was an easy target. And they didn't care about Pete's feelings. Not at all. They just wanted their clicks. They just wanted people to come watch their videos with their outrage and their anger. And that's all that they did them for. Because Bethesda and Pete Hines are above reproach. They are the victims of this situation. I mean, if we actually want to speak in reality now... Uh, of course, you all know that when Fallout 76 came out, it was in a mitigated disaster. Now, I did uh, a very big video to start with because I participated in the beta. And then I just put out a video saying, do not buy this game. And I talked about my experience in the beta and how terrible it was. And that video caught fire and it did very well indeed. But a few days later... Everybody else sees the game for what it is. And I wasn't the only one with this story. This was a, a very uh, repeatable uh, narrative that was going on amongst a lot of people. And the game came out and everyone saw it for what it was. An absolute piece of crap. A game that was so half assed it was unreal. Ap apart from, of course, the uh, cash shop. For the digital shite. That was working mwah, bueno. Hey Pete. That was working bueno. With it's overpriced digital shit. Even though you just paid $60. 50 quid. To purchase Failout 70 shit. And where was Pete. And where was Todd Howard. Where was Pete. And where was Todd Howard. When all the problems with the game. Were coming to light. Nowhere. Like good little cowards. Where was Pete and where was Todd when Bethesda started doxing people who were applying to have their tatty piece of plastic shit bag that they got in their expensive collector's editions for the canvas ones, which you had initially said was going to be, and then failed to tell people that you'd substitute it out because you found a cheaper alternative. Pete Hines is the victim here, folks. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Where were you then? Nowhere. Where were you when you put out the fail out 70 shit rum and the bottles were not marrying up with the plastic, the balance wasn't correct, the pour, it was pouring all over the place when you're trying to tip a glass. It was just a basic plastic outside, even though you'd clearly marketed it Clearly, by the images that you put up, that it was going to be some sort of frosted glass rocket. Where were you then, Pete? Where was Todd? The good little cowards were silent. Because that is Pete Hines. A lying coward. And here, folks, he's trying to paint a new narrative. Because he's come out of his little hidey hole, his little burrow... And next month, of course, Wastelanders is due to release. So Pete, who thinks you're all idiots, and we'll get into that in a moment as well, thinks all of us, me as well, everyone, the whole job lot, we're all idiots. He thinks, ah, enough time has now passed between the launch of Failout 70 shit and now. So people are probably starting to forget some of the issues that the game had, some of the problems, it's now starting to leave their brain. Let's try and create a new narrative. Nasty YouTubers having a go at us, poor Bethesda, and our easy target of Fallout 76 because not everything was working according to plan. 
This guy is so obvious. Pete is such a basic bitch, it's unreal. I wouldn't believe a word that came out of your mouth. But don't worry, Pete's got all of these angles covered. He makes sure of it. He makes sure to try and uh, cast off YouTubers immediately. Oh, they're just doing videos for clicks and money. Then he also says, oh, it's the usual people that make the videos. Hoping, of course, that they won't and say, well, I didn't make a video this time. Reverse psychology. Nice try. And then he's hoping that everybody just forgets. And it's Bethesda. Poor, poor Bethesda that are the victims in this situation. And he says... Oh, most people will probably say they don't believe anything I say anyway. Let's cover that base as well, Pete. You got all those bases covered? Great. Now you can go into how much of a victim you are. This guy is pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. He goes into some of the issues about the game. And he admits that he knew that the game wasn't ready. Oh, we knew this wasn't ready. But it came out anyway. But we knew it wasn't ready. But, but you see... We didn't see at our back end what you saw when you played it. Oh. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to press X to doubt on that one, Pete. I'm going to I'm going to press X to doubt if that's okay. Is that all right? Thanks. I think they were fully aware of the issues that they had, but they put it out anyway. Whether it is or not is to hit a fiscal quarter, I don't know. Or whether or not it was just because they're Bethesda and people eat up Bethesda. Ah, we put out games. They have problems all the time. The Elder Scroll games got a lot of issues. People don't really complain about them. They're fun. You know, people find it quirky. We'll fix it as we go along because it's an online game. People will be fine. I think they truly thought they'd get away with most of it. I thought that, you know, I do think they thought they'd get some blowback, but they'd get away with most of it. No. No chance, mate. Not when you're throwing out 20-something plus dollar cosmetics and shite like that with your digital store. And if Bethesda knew that this game wasn't ready when it came out, if they knew it wasn't in a fit state, which they have admitted, then why, oh why, didn't they have the moral compass to say, you can have a refund if you want a refund? In fact, they went quite the opposite. They absolutely, categorically refused to give refunds for the game. They wanted to lock these players' money because they knew the game that they had was an absolute piece of tripe because Pete Hines is a lying coward who hid, whether it's behind a desk or a skirt or a pair of pantaloons, hid from all the flack that was going on when the shit was hitting the fan, just like Todd Howard. And he has the audacity in this interview to talk about how it gets to him, how it gets to him when people call him a liar. And then he gives this insane analogy about Chuck E. Cheese, which makes me think the guy is fucking tapped. Because he says, when it came to the cosmetics promise, where we promised people, promised Pete, it's a, it's a word that people use when they mean something, you know? And when they break promise, people are normally very upset because promise holds weight. When they promised that it was going to be cosmetic only DLC, uh, cosmetic only, sorry, uh, microtransactions, and then they came out with the fail out 70 shit first with the private servers and the costumes attached to that as well and the bags and the all this kind of gubbins that you got with that $100 a year membership. When he started to get shit about that, he's like, I, I hated it when people call me a liar. And this is his analogy about Chuck E. Cheese. He said, it was like saying to your kids, Hey kids, this Saturday, we're going to go to Chuck E. Cheese. But during the week, I fell ill. And so when Ch when Saturday comes around and the kids are like, we want to go to Chuck E. Cheese, Dad. And I'm like, I can't go, I'm ill. And they're like, you lied to us, Daddy, you lied. 
But these things just happen. Nopey. That was the most shittiest analogy you could possibly do. Because if that was the case, when you got better, you could have just taken your kids to chuck your fucking G's. No. It's more akin to this. It's more akin to saying to your kids, Hey kids, on Saturday, I'm going to take you to Chuck E. Cheese. And then Saturday comes around, and we're all getting to the car, and we're driving into town, and then you turn around and say, Oh kids, we're not going to Chuck E. Cheese anymore. We're going to the fancy restaurant in town. And guess what? You're fucking paying. That's a much better analogy, Pete. A much better analogy. You lying coward. Uh, so we've gone through the doxing, we've gone through the canvas bag, the release, the refusing refunds, admitting that the game wasn't ready, the overpriced cosmetics in the shop. Oh yeah, the banning of the players, of course. People, I mean, I've got no sympathy for people that play this game. According to uh, Pete, again, I'm going to press X to doubt on this one, Pete. The MAUs for Fallout 76, they're going up and up every month. Every month. Since release, apparently, they've got more and more. <laughs> They, that, that sounds great, Pete. They're so good that you actually reneged on your promise about uh, cosmetic-only microtransactions. That's how good it was. Uh, your MAUs are so good, and they're just going up and up and up, that you decided to put more paid stuff in with the failout membership, even though you haven't fixed the game, it's still bugged, it's still got plenty of bugs from release, and you've barely put a scrap of content into it since launch. That's that's the story that you're going with. Oh, okay. And the fact, of course, that Wastelanders was delayed, was due out last year, was meant to come out Q1 this year, it's actually missed Q1, it's going to hit Q2 instead. Just, I know... Might be being a little bit pedantic here, but still, missed another deadline. But then you banned the people who actually stayed on your game. Some of them who just tried to fix it with little little uh, bits of, uh, you know, modding, etc. No, no, get rid of them. And the person who put in the most hours in the game, I'll ban him. And then when he was unbanned, because you did this huge wave of unbanning, Oh yeah, and that lasted about a day and then you banned a bunch of people again. The person who'd spent the longest amount of time in the game could show that he hadn't been cheating at all. But you know, this is... Bethesda, by the looks of it, couldn't even tell when people were cheating and not cheating. And then we've had bug after bug after embarrassing bug. Recently, the glitch, of course, with people running around, literally stealing all the shit off people's backs. But people, I must reiterate, and I apologise for not saying it sooner, it's YouTuber's fault. It's my fault. It's my fault as a horrible YouTuber to report on this shitty game. Because I'm just doing it for clicks and monies. And I'm not trying to make the people aware of the horrific treatment of Bethesda. And how the behaviour of Pete here clearly shows how they're mad, but they're not mad really because of me and other YouTubers. They're mad because people dared to challenge the mighty Bethesda. One other thing, just before I go, I was going to wrap it up here, but I just remembered something about the interview. He's uh, asked about the price of the Failout First membership. And he's just sat there... Like he doesn't have a care in the world. Because he doesn't. Because he's Pete Hines at Bethesda. He doesn't know what a care in the world is to regular people. So he talks about the Failout 70 ship membership. And he talks about... Oh, we just we just put a price out there and, and, and people could pay for it. You know? And And people are just like, hey, but this isn't... You know, Netflix costs less than this, but we're just like, yeah, but we're not asking for Netflix. We, we, we're giving you this. We're giving you Fallout. And, and people are pay, playing a lot of game time here, and we're saying to them, hey, you're playing a lot of game time. Basically, what the cowardly liar is saying is we understand that 
uh, fans who will follow us no matter what we do, no matter how many mistakes we make, they are ripe for exploitation and we absolutely exploited the shit out of them. <sighs> oh, Pete. This this is not a good look. How how did this interview go down, by the way? Oh, it's uh, it's going well. It's going well for you there, Pete. Maybe because people just won't believe a word that comes out of your mouth. And this interview isn't a good look for you. I think it kind of exposes exactly who you are. When you're Pete Hines in Bethesda, and <laughs> you want to bring in the fact that you're annoyed about YouTubers and social media people calling out your game, which is a piece of shit. Oh my God, it shows that you have no backbone. You have no backbone. People, you know, you're not used to people saying no to you, Pete. Are you? You're not no. You, you're not used to people uh, questioning you, are you, Pete? It just shows how fragile you are. And maybe that's why you came here to a nice little safe space to have a good old cry. Uh, so there we go, folks. Uh, I will link this in the description box down below so you can see it in its entirety. You can see it in all its context. And Pete, here's the beauty of that. Because here on YouTube, when I make a video like this, and if I do try and create a false narrative, I will be called out on it. Because that's what people do on YouTube, Pete. But when you put out a piece of shit, like Fallout 70 shit was, and then you try and play victim, do you know how many people are going to have sympathy for you? <laughs> Spoilers. Not a lot. Not a lot, darling. So there we go, folks. Hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming. Links are in the description box down below, as is this interview. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.